This section should enable you to visualize the components in the LCAP lubricating oil system. Click the parts to get more detailed information. Emergency stop button. This should be used in the event of high vibrations. Heat pack power unit. This contains the main fuses and the contactors which are controlled from the EPC. Separator and pump starter. The starter is used to start the separator and the pump. EPC 400 supervision and controller. The EPC-400 is a dedicated microprocessor-based supervision and control unit. Header tank for operating water. This tank stores the low-pressure operating water for closing the bowl. The tank is positioned such that the water level in the tank is between 2.2 and 3.2 meters above the connections on the side of the separator. Water valve block. Both the operating and the conditioning slash displacement water are supplied from this valve block. The operating water is used for opening and closing the separator bowl, and the conditioning slash displacement water is used inside the bowl. Solenoids are activated by the EPC 400. Alcap separator. From the outside, the LOPX looks different to the FOPX. It only has two pipes, oil inlet and oil outlet. Transducer MT4. This is the primary supervisory component within the ALCAP system. This unique device continually monitors changes in the condition of all the cleaned oil leaving the separator. High and low pressure switches and pressure gauge. Under normal conditions, cleaned oil is pumped away from the separator by the pairing disc in the oil outlet on the top of the separator. A positive pressure will be indicated by the pressure gauge. The actual value depends on the downstream pressure, we call this P-min. There is also a maximum pressure at which the bowl overflows. We call this P-max. The back pressure regulating valve is used to set this pressure midway between P-min and P-max. As a guide, this figure could typically be 1.5 to 2.0 bar. The high and low pressure switches can now be set to either side of the typical figure, so as to give warnings should there be a deviation of the oil output from the separator. Flow indicator. It should be stressed that this is a flow indicator and not a flow meter. Recirculation valve. Pneumatic three-way valve, V1. When the valve is de-energized, oil flows in at the side and out at the bottom and is then recirculated back to the sump tank. As an alternative, it can also recirculate to the clean oil outlet. The three-way valve is air activated. When activated, the valve spindle and plug move downwards, allowing oil to pass through and on to the separator. One of the main control functions of the system is to recirculate oil away from the separator in the event of an abnormal situation. Note, there is one situation when oil is to flow to the separator during an abnormal condition, namely during an emergency stop slash vibrations. Recirculation valve. Pneumatic three-way valve. V1. When the valve is de-energized, oil flows in at the side and out at the bottom, and is then recirculated back to the sump tank. As an alternative, it can also recirculate to the clean oil outlet. The three-way valve is air activated. When activated, the valve spindle and plug move downwards, allowing oil to pass through and on to the separator. One of the main control functions of the system is to recirculate oil away from the separator in the event of an abnormal situation. Note, there is one situation when oil is to flow to the separator during an abnormal condition, namely during an emergency stop slash vibrations. High and low pressure switches and pressure gauge. Under normal conditions, cleaned oil is pumped away from the separator by the pairing disc in the oil outlet on the top of the separator. A positive pressure will be indicated by the pressure gauge. The actual value depends on the downstream pressure. We call this P-min. There is also a maximum pressure at which the bowl overflows. We call this P-max. 
The back pressure regulating valve is used to set this pressure midway between P min and P max. As a guide, this figure could typically be 1.5 to 2.0 bar. The high and low pressure switches can now be set to either side of the typical figure, so as to give warnings should there be a deviation of the oil output from the separator. The oil viscosity should be low prior to entering the separator. This gives better separation. Remember Stokes' law. The recommended inlet temperature is 95 degrees Celsius for trunk diesel engine lube oil, 90 degrees Celsius for crosshead diesel engine lube oil. Feed pump. A positive displacement pump, gear or screw type must be used. A screw type pump from Alpha Laval is a good solution. Strainer. The purpose of the strainer is to protect the pump from any pipe or tank debris. It should be installed close to the suction side of the pump. Pneumatic block valve. This valve switches the air to activate the oil recirculation valve.